In this example, we have been given the list of activities which make up the project network. And we have also been given the time for each of the activities to complete. Now in this example, the way we have been given the precedence relationship is in the form of the activity description. So 1, 2 means 1 is representing a node and 2 is also representing a node and 1, 2 means 1 precedes 2 and same way 1, 3 means 1 precedes the event number 3. 2, 4 means 2 precedes event number 4 and so on. So in other words, we have been given the activities, their duration, as well as the precedence relationship. Now with this information, let's try to construct a network diagram. Then we'll try to determine the earliest occurrence and the latest occurrence for each of the events. And then we'll try to find the critical path which is basically the most important steps or most important activities that the project manager should always be careful about. So this is node 1 and this is node 2. So we have 1, 2 which takes 4 weeks. The arrow in blue color represents the activity 1, 2 and it takes four weeks for completion. So we have drawn one, two. Now next is one, three. So one is preceding event number three. So let's draw event number three. Now let's draw the activity. And one, three takes one week to complete. So this is one. So we have completed one three. Next is two four. And the next one is three four. So both two and three are actually going to merge into four. So two and three are going to merge into four. So let's draw four somewhere here. And this is the activity 2, 4, and this is the activity 3, 4. 2, 4 takes one week, and 3, 4 also takes one week. So we have completed 2, 4, and 3, 4. Now next is 3, 5, and this is the only other activity where 3 is preceding any other event. So let's draw event number 5. Now we'll draw the activity 3, 5. And this takes 6 weeks to complete. So this is 6. So we have done 3, 5. Next is 4, 9. So 4 is here, let's draw 9 and now we'll draw the activity 4, 9 and 4, 9 takes 5 weeks to complete. So this is 5, so we have done 4, 9. Next is 5, 6 and 5, 7. So 5 is preceding both 6 and 7. So we have 5 here, let's draw 6 and 7 and the arrows. Now 5, 6 takes 4 weeks and 5, 7 takes 8 weeks. So this is 4 and this is 8. So 5, 6 is done, 5, 7 is done. Next is 6, 8, 7, 8. So 6 and 7 both merge into 8. So let's say this is 8, so both 6 and 7 will merge into 8, and 6, 8 takes 1 week, 
and 7 8 takes 2 weeks to complete so here we are done with 6 8 as well as 7 8 next is 8 10 and 9 10 so 8 and 9 both merge into 10 so we have 9 here and 8 here so both will merge into 10 so let's draw 10 here and these are the activities 9 10 and 8 10 9 10 takes 7 weeks and 8 10 takes 5 weeks so 9 10 is 7 and 8 10 is 5 so we have done 8 10 and 9 10 so now we have drawn all the activities and shown the duration so this is how our network diagram looks like so here 1 is the starting node and 10 is the ending node now after the construction of the network we have to compute the earliest occurrence and latest occurrence for each of the events so here the events have been shown in the red color so let's compute the earliest occurrence and latest occurrence for each of the events so first we'll compute the earliest occurrence and for the earliest occurrence we'll do the forward pass that means we'll go from left to the right and then we'll do the latest occurrence and for that we'll go from right to the left now event number one can occur at any point because there is no activity preceding this node so we can say that this event the earliest it can occur is at the zeroth instance so earliest occurrence time is zero now two is dependent on the completion of the activity between one and two now the earliest event two can occur is once the activity between 1 and 2 has been completed which is equal to 4 plus 0 so the earliest occurrence time is 4 now for event number 3 the earliest it can occur is when activity 1 3 has been completed now event 1 the earliest time is 0 and activity 1 3 takes 1 week to complete so the earliest occurrence time for event number 3 is 1 plus 0 which is 1 so earliest occurrence is equal to 1 for event number 3 now for event number 4 the earliest it can occur is when both activity 2 4 and 3 4 have been completed now activity 2 4 is completed after 4 plus 1 5 weeks while activity 3 4 is completed after 1 plus 1 2 weeks so this activity is completed after 5 weeks while this activity is completed after 2 weeks now until and unless both the activities have been completed event 4 cannot occur so the earliest event 4 can occur is on the fifth week so earliest occurrence is equal to 5 now for event number 5 the earliest occurrence time is when activity 3 5 has been completed so 3 5 will be completed after 1 plus 6 that is 7 weeks so the earliest occurrence time is 7 for event number 6 the earliest it can occur is once activity 5 6 has been completed now 5 6 will be completed after 4 plus 7 which is 11 weeks so the earliest occurrence is equal to 11 for event number 7 the earliest occurrence will be when activity 5 7 has been completed 
5 7 will be completed after 8 plus 7 which is 15 weeks so earliest occurrence is equal to 15 for event number 9 the earliest occurrence will be after 4 9 has been completed and that will happen after 5 plus 5 10 weeks so earliest occurrence is 10 for event number 8 the earliest it can occur is when both 6 8 and 7 8 have been completed now 6 8 will be completed after 11 plus 1 12 weeks whereas 7 8 will be completed after 15 plus 2 17 weeks so even though 6 8 is completing after 12 weeks which is much earlier than when the activity 7 8 is completing event number 8 cannot occur till both have been completed so the earliest event number 8 can occur is the 17th week now for event number 10 event number 10 the earliest occurrence is when 9 10 and 8 10 have both been completed 9 10 will be completed after 17 weeks whereas 8 10 will be completed after 17 plus 5 which is 22 weeks now both the activities should be completed before event 10 can occur so event 10 will occur after the 22nd week so the earliest occurrence is 22 so now we have the earliest occurrence of the last event as 22 weeks now without shifting the end or the completion time of the entire project we want to find out how much or what is the latest occurrence for each of the events so let's take the latest occurrence for event number 10 as 22 and let's take a backward pass to find what is the latest occurrence for each of the events so the latest occurrence for event number 10 is 22 weeks now for event number 9 the activity duration for 9 10 is 7 weeks so the latest event 9 can occur is 22 minus 7 which is 15 weeks so l is equal to 15 so let's quickly check so suppose we delay this event by one more week and say our latest occurrence time for event number 9 is 16th week now 16 plus 7 will be 23 so then our overall timeline for the project gets shifted from 22 to 23 which is not acceptable so the latest occurrence for event number 9 is the 15th week now for event number 8 the latest event 8 should occur so that the following event does not get delayed is 22 minus 5 because the activity 8 10 takes 5 weeks and event 10 has to occur latest by the 22nd week so 22 minus 5 which is 17 so the latest occurrence for event number 8 is the 17th week for event number 7 the latest this event can occur is 17 minus 2 which is 15th week the latest event number 6 can occur is 17 minus 1 which is 16th week now the latest event number 5 needs to occur by is such that both events number 6 and 7 are not delayed by more than their latest occurrence time of 16 and 15th week respectively so if we consider the activity 5 6 then the latest occurrence for event 5 is 16 minus 4 which is 12 and for activity 5 7 15 minus 8 which is 7 so 12 and 7 so we can't wait till the 12th week because if we wait till the 12th week then activity 5 7 will also get delayed so event number 5 
at the latest should occur such that activity 57 does not delay the latest occurrence time for event number 7. So 15 minus 8 is 7 so latest this event should occur by the 7th week. Now for event number 4 latest this event should occur is such that the event number 9 is not delayed more than the latest occurrence time of this event. Now activity 4 9 takes 5 weeks and the latest occurrence for event number 9 is 15th week so event 4 should occur at the latest by 15 minus 5 which is 10th week. Now for event number 3 there are two following activities which is 3 4 and 3 5. The latest occurrence for event number 3 if we consider activity 3 4 is 10 minus 1 which is 9th week while the latest occurrence for event number 3 for activity 3 5 is 7 minus 6 which is the first week. So if we delay it further from first week then the latest occurrence for event number 5 will be delayed so which we can't do. So the latest occurrence should be the first week for event number 3. For event number 2 the latest occurrence will be 10 minus 1 which is the ninth week. Now for event number 1 there are two following activities 1 2 and 1 3. If we consider 1 2 the latest occurrence for event 1 should be 9 minus 4 which is fifth week whereas if we consider 1 3 the latest occurrence should be 1 minus 1 which is 0. So we have to consider the earliest of the two. So the latest occurrence for event number 1 will be the 0th week or the 0th instance. So with this we have completed the calculation of the earliest occurrence and the latest occurrence time for each of the events. Now with this information let's try to find the critical path for the network. Now we know the latest and the earliest occurrence time for each of the events. So we can use the following three rules to determine if any of the activities is a critical activity or not. So the first rule is the earliest occurrence time should be equal to the latest occurrence time for the tail event. The second rule is the earliest occurrence time should be equal to the latest occurrence time for the head event. And the third is that the earliest occurrence time of event J minus the earliest occurrence time of event I should be equal to the latest occurrence time of event J minus the latest occurrence time of event I which should be equal to the duration of the activity which is T I J. So any of the activities which meets all these three conditions is known to be a critical activity. So basically these three conditions imply that the activity which meets these three is a critical activity and it cannot be delayed. So for the tail event the earliest occurrence is equal to the latest occurrence. For the head event the earliest occurrence is equal to the latest occurrence and the differences between all the earliest occurrences between the head and tail and the latest occurrence between the head and tail is equal to the duration. What this implies is that there is no scope for delaying that particular activity and that is why it is a critical activity. So let's first take activity 1, 2. So the tail event is event number 1. So E is equal to L. So the first condition is met. The second condition is for the head event. So for head event, E is not equal to L. E is equal to 4 and L is equal to 9. So 1, 2 is not a critical activity. Now let's consider activity 1, 3. So for tail event, which is event number 1, E is equal to L. 
for head event which is event number 3 is equal to L now EJ which is 1 minus EI which is 0 which is 1 minus 0 is 1 now LJ is 1 and LI is 0 so this is also 1 so EJ minus EI is 1 LJ minus LI is also 1 and TIJ which is this number is also 1 so all the three conditions are being met so this is a critical activity so let's do a double arrow here to denote that this is a critical activity now let's consider activity 2 4 so for tail event E is not equal to L so the first condition fails so 2 4 is not a critical activity activity 3 4 for tail event E is equal to L for head event E is not equal to L so 3 4 is also not a critical activity let's consider 3 5 so for tail event E is equal to L 1 1 for head event E is equal to L 7 7 and the third condition EJ which is 7 minus EI which is 1 so 7 minus 1 is 6 should be equal to LJ which is again 7 minus LI which is 1 so 7 minus 1 is also 6 and TJ which is the duration TIJ sorry uh, is also 6 so the third condition is also met so basically all the three conditions are met and that's why this is a critical activity now let's consider 4 9 so for tail event E is not equal to L so this is not a critical activity let's consider 9 10 so tail event is event number 9 E is not equal to L so this is also not a critical activity so now let's consider 5 6 for tail event E is equal to L 7 7 for the head event E is not equal to L so this is not a critical activity for 5 7 tail event is 5 E is equal to L for head event which is 7 E is equal to L so the first two conditions are met now third condition EJ which is 15 minus EI which is 7 so 15 minus 7 is 8 LJ is 15 LI is 7 15 minus 7 is 8 and the TIJ is also 8 so all these three conditions are met so 5 7 is a critical activity now activity 6 8 so for tail event E is not equal to L so this is not a critical activity now activity 7 8 for tail event E is equal to L for head event E is equal to L EJ 17 minus EI which is 15 is 2 LJ 17 minus LI to 15 so this is also 2 and the TIJ is also 2 so this is a critical activity now activity 8 10 for tail event E is equal to L for head event E is equal to L now third condition EJ 22 minus EI which is 17 so 22 minus 17 is 5 LJ is 22, LI is 17, 22 minus 17 is again 5 and TIJ which is 5 so all the three are equal and all the three conditions are met so this is also a critical activity so our critical path is 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, 10 and also we know that the latest and earliest occurrence time of event number 10 is the 22nd week so the duration of the project is 22 weeks which will also be the duration of the critical path so let's see 1 plus 6 is 7 7 plus 8 is 15 15 plus 2 is 17 17 plus 5 is 22 so the duration of the project is 22 weeks